Good afternoon. About a decade ago, I found myself torn as an artist who wanted to express himself and as an activist who found myself more and more dis disturbed by where our country was going post 9-11. It seemed like the powers that be were creating divisive uh, descriptions of us and them. They were pushing people to the margins and basically looking for an enemy out there instead of solutions right in front of us and in our own backyard. My point was, as a creative person, I felt there was a place for us and for them and to use stories of them to reflect our society with perseverance and humility. As a photographer, that was my medium. Food was the subject. It's a subject that democratized everything. Everyone in this room can deal and understand issues about food. Specifically, I chose California farm workers to create a photo essay. California farm workers are our state's largest workforce. At 1.1 million strong, they feed half of the nation. It's kind of a staggering statistic to look at these two things and use them to frame the stories of us and them. So what I did is I traveled about 4,000 miles over nine months, traveling through the fields of California from the bottom at El Centro all the way up to Sacramento, looking at stories that could bring humility and compassion, stories of the young and the old, stories about crews of men and women who were separated from their families for months on end, women who took bold stances out in the fields about issues like domestic violence, as well as stories about community scraping together to preserve themselves, and stories about those who were forgotten, lost, and unspoken for. The truth of the matter is, as many sides of this community as I actually documented, we can't, as middle-class Americans, often relate to what farm workers are dealing with. Wages of $11,000 a year for working six and seven days in the fields. Wages which have been stagnant for 30 plus years. But one thing, the cruelest irony in all the work that I did, was the fact that these people, the people who feed the best fed nation on this planet cannot often afford to feed themselves. It's something that has stuck with me in the many years since I've done this project and continue to talk about these issues. And it was something that ultimately, I think, grounded my understanding in issues of hunger on a much larger basis. You see, I'm a valley boy. Proud of it, raised there, living there now. And the truth is that the valley used to be home to over 40,000 acres of prime California citrus. Now, most of those have been paved over they become strip malls, they become parking lots. But the truth of the matter is, is that those trees, although they've been paved over, tens of thousands of them still exist. They're still with us, producing millions of pounds a year, literally millions of pounds which fall to the ground. With my understanding of farm worker issues and what it takes to cultivate that fruit, and then being in the middle of the worst economy and seeing people lined up at food pantries all around my community, I got mad and I decided to do something about it. So I actually got a few friends and we harvested a, a neighbor's tangerine tree. Three of us in one day, 85 pounds of tangerines. We came back week after week until those 85 pounds grew into 800 pounds of citrus from one single backyard. Now the concept of gleaning is not new, it's been around for centuries. But actually, gleaning in Los Angeles for the hungry was something I didn't see happening. And so what I did is I started an organization. And in our organization, we don't just glean for the hungry, but we're about reconnecting and re-experiencing California's abundance as it relates to us today. This organization basically is called Food Forward. And in the last two years since it began, we have harvested over 1.5 million servings of fresh, free, local fruit for the hungry. Now these are, thank you. These are Angelinos, 
These are people of all stripes and sizes. They're students, they're architects, they're actors, they're housewives. They're people that come together with a concern about doing good outside. We call ourselves fruitanthropists. <laughs> and basically, where you guys have all heard of the win-win scenario, we call what we do win to the fourth. You see, in our program, pantries get free produce, homeowners get a tax deduction for every pound that we harvest, volunteers see their immediate impact on their fight with hunger, but most importantly, the hungry are getting free nutritious produce they would not get otherwise. Both of these journeys, whether it's the backyard harvesting for the hungry, or it's bringing out the stories of farm workers in a dignified way so we understand a little bit more of the human cost of feeding America, they both merge for me. And what they say to me is we need to reevaluate and honor the sacredness of what we've been given as Californians and as Americans. At the same time, I feel like there's an equation underlying all of this, which I'd like to leave you with, which is compassion merged with action equals change. Thank you.